Hey guys, welcome to week seven of Cycle 3 Science. Over the next six weeks, we will be doing um, the My Body series, where we will be each week doing different little organs. And on week 12, we'll put them all together so each kid has a body to take home, um, life-size body to take home to talk about the organs um, and our body anatomy in the basic form. Uh, we all know Psalm 139 talks about that we are fearfully and wonderfully made. How marvelous are your works, O Lord. The more you learn about the body, the more you learn about science and anatomy, um, at least for me, it points me back to truly an intelligent designer um, who thought of so many details that could not have just happened. And so it's really pretty cool. So my purpose in these videos is just to give you a few key talking points about each organ to save your prep time and just to kind of tell you how I would lay it out um, in class. So each week you will be given um, the sheets to color, the organs to color. And so I would tell my few three to four talking points that makes these organs really cool. I would then have them color that organ and set it to the side. Talk about the next one, color that organ, and set it to the side. Talk about the next one, color, and set it to the side. Once you've done each three to four organs you'll do that week, then spend the last five or ten minutes cutting them out. Um, the little ones, as you are talking and they color, then afterwards hand them to the parents to help cut out, especially the smaller ones. Some of the, the bigger ones the four-year-olds could help with but um, four and five year olds may or may not need a lot of parental assistance with that. So, but the parents can be doing it while you're still talking, the kids are still engaged in coloring um, and still make it productive time. So, week seven, <clears throat> we are talking about the brain, the heart, the kidneys, and the bladder. So, number one, the brain. The brain is the most complex and the most fragile organ in our body. Um, it looks like a big spongy mass of blobs um, that doesn't look like it could really do a whole lot of anything. But it is truly the control center. So number one talking point, it is complex and it is fragile. Um, so first of all, with the brain review wise, what do we know? What part of what system is it a part of? What's well, part of our nervous system? Brain, spinal cord, and nerves. And so we know it's that. How is our brain protected? What is that skeleton we talked about in the middle that part of it protects our brain? It's our axial skeleton. What are the parts? Skull, vertebrae, sternum, and ribs. Um, so throw those review in there when you can. So number one, the brain is complex. It's fragile. God has protected it with four different layers of meninges, little layers of fluid and our skull to help protect it because it is so fragile. Um, number two, it is the control center of everything in our body. And so it controls our sensation, all five senses. What are the five senses we talked about? You can review those. The brain controls all of those and um, interprets all of the sensation, all the nerves that come back um, from our sight, hearing, taste, touch, and smell. Um, so it controls sensation. It also controls motor. We have voluntary motor, like me talking, me moving. That's voluntary because I'm telling my body to do it. Or involuntary movement, like our breathing, our heart rate. It controls those muscles in movement. <clears throat> Excuse me without our, us having to tell our brain to do it. So it controls sensation and all voluntary and involuntary mo motor movement. Our brain is divided into four main parts, which you can see in this cool picture here. So you've got a frontal, parietal, occipital, and temporal lobes. These areas each have different jobs. Each different job, each different part of the brain um, has different functions that it takes care of. <clears throat> so God organized it in a special way so that everything is organized and has a place to go. Now certainly the brain has tons of neurons that interact with each other to make it all work because again, it's super complex. 
Um, the one thing I want to point out about those four parts is the front part, our frontal lobe, is where we have personality, but it's also where we reason or have logic. CC has whole years of studying reasoning and logic because it is one of the things that um, is a higher level functioning than the other creature. It makes humans higher level functioning, thinking, reasoning beings than any other creatures. Um, is this frontal part of our brain that is so complex, we can draw conclusions, we can question things, we can reason and come to our own thought processes. Um, and that is unique to us, and that is um, something that happens all in the frontal part of our brain. So the brain is complex and fragile. It is the control center of everything, including sensation and motor. It is divided into four main areas that each have their own job, including the frontal reason, the frontal region, which helps us reason and have logic and thought. And then the last thing is it also releases certain hormones, which control our blood pressure and other important functions throughout our brain. So those are some four main parts. I would then have the kids color their brain and spinal cord and then set it to the side. All right, then we have our heart. Everybody put your hand on your heart. Can you feel it? All right, now feel up here in your neck. Can you feel your heart beating? Well, how can you feel it in your neck? Your heart's not in your neck. Where else can you feel it? Can you feel it in your wrist? Can you feel it in your feet? If you have flip-flops on, you can. You can feel it on the top of your foot, behind your ankle bone, behind your knees, on your wrist, up here, up here. Um, and the reason we can feel our heartbeat everywhere is because our heart is a muscle. And that muscle, that cardiac muscle, remember one of the three types of muscles, skeletal, smooth, and cardiac? The cardiac muscle pumps, pushes blood throughout our entire body. Our heart pumps over 100,000 times in a day over a hundred thousand times in a day. My other muscles would be exhausted if I did anything a hundred thousand times in a day, but God created the cardiac muscle to be unique and that it has incredible endurance. Even with heart disease, it keeps trying and going as hard as it can. So our heart, number one, so again, feel your heart, feel their heart beat everywhere throughout their bodies, kind of just a cool thing. You could have the kids stand up and run and then feel their heart beat again, how it changes. Um, so it pumps blood throughout our entire body. It pumps more than 100,000 times in a day. And what is it pumping? It's pumping blood that has oxygen in it. So it's pumping. Remember, we talked about in science a couple weeks ago, the importance of oxygen as food or energy to our bodies. And so it's pumping that food, that oxygen throughout all our bodies to our muscles and to our nerves and um, throughout everywhere in our body and then pumps back the blood that needs to get oxygen back again. So it pumps that many times and it can pump blood through our entire body in just one minute. So that's like, oh, well, that's cool. Well, all the vessels in our body are 60,000 miles of vessels. So that includes our veins, arteries, and capillaries. 60,000 miles. I looked that up in a couple of different sites because that just seemed insane. But over 60,000 miles of vessels, that blood travels, and it can do that in a minute. Pretty amazing, um, the cardiac muscle. That's our heart. So again, pumps blood, feel the heartbeat. You can feel it all throughout. Over 100,000 times in a day it pumps, and it can pump our entire blood through our entire body, 60,000 miles of vessels in a minute. Pretty awesome. All right, so then I would color the heart and then set it aside. So here's our heart. Color your heart and then set it aside. And then let's look at our kidneys. All right, so you got your kidneys next. So our kidneys um, are part of our excretory system, which we will learn about in a couple weeks. The excretory system means to excrete or to clean things out. So it is part of our cleanup system. And so 
the kidneys are, I think of them as like a little cleaning factory. Um, your blood comes in, your kidneys filter out all extra fluid and waste. Things that come through your body that your body does not need, nor does it want. Your kidneys, God designed, know what's not normal and know what's not good, and they filter them out. So um, they clean the, the blood before it gets sent back to the heart. Um, so number one, that's what they are. They're like a powerful chemical cleaning pro factory. Um, they've got lots of little parts that the blood goes through, lots of little um, different little organs within the organ um, that um, different cells that help to clean the blood. So it filters out fluid, it cleans out waste, it's a powerful little factory, um, and it also, the kidneys send out hormones with, uh, which also help control our blood pressure, and it produces new red blood cells. So the kidneys help to create hormones that make new red blood cells, help control our blood pressure, um, and also control our calcium filtration or a reabsorption for our bones. And so they are a powerful little thing. They are shaped like um, beans, kind of shaped like beans, like you see here, kidney beans. And if you put your hands behind your back, they're around that location. You have two, one on each side. Those are your kidneys. Color your kidneys and then set them aside. The bladder, last but not least, also part of our excretory system. Those kidneys, those factories are working things out. They're getting the waste, the extra fluid. They then send all that fluid and extra waste down to, through ureters, which are like straws, to your bladder. This is my pretend bladder here um, that shows you kind of a visual. Your bladder is like a storage tank, like this bottle here, and it can hold up to about 16 ounces, as much as in this is bottle here, um, and hold that much fluid for about two to three hours while we're moving around. Well, why is that important? Why did God give us a bladder? We think, ah, that's gross. Um, well, imagine if you didn't have a storage tank. Your kidneys are fil filtering out all this junk and it would just fall out our body. And so God gave us a, a bladder which holds all that extra fluid and waste until we can um, go to the bathroom. And so this is a visual of how much fluid our bladders can hold. So our bladders are a storage tank. That's really their main role. Um, and the other important thing to know is it is also filled with a muscle. It's filled with a muscle liner that helps to stretch and accommodate all that extra fluid and also to help get it out when it's time. So, and it will hold 16 ounces for two to three hours, which this is kind of your visual. Each of my tutors will have a little ginger ale bottle, just so you can show that. Then you color your bladder, set it to the side, and then they can cut them all out, um, and week seven is done. Be amazed.